Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at weather for a set of 40 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to New Year's Day, the first day of 2025. And uh, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Exeter Affairs and ECM Ensembles. Maybe on trying a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us into the second half of January and I'll get to that for you in a moment. Just say that first the video today is our 6am UK weather forecast. It's going to be live at 6 6 p.m. Lighting tonight at 6. We're going to go through the trials there and we'll do the first ensembles watch of this season as well. So that's going to be quite uh, interesting and quite an exciting live stream coming up at 6 p.m. I shall see you a little bit later on. For that one, please like, share, and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, doing that. And just to say that if you've been enjoying the content on the channel this year, then uh, please can you consider giving a donation to myself and to Gazworthers to help support the channel. Um, so the link to the uh, Gazworthers PayPal page is in the description with this uh, video. So you're just going to look down there <laughs> underneath the video and uh, you'll be able to see the, the, the link to PayPal. Uh, sign into your PayPal uh, account. Send whatever donation you'd like to Gazworthers and we'll do your shout out in the video. So we'll say hello and Merry Christmas to you. Maybe you want to shout out somebody else, a friend, a family member. Um, no, we're more than happy to do that as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for all of the support over all of the years. It's absolutely incredible. Thank you so much to each and every one of you and hello to all of you right let's start the video then we're going to begin with the arctic oscillation observed and forecast so the black line shows where we've been with the ao the red lines at the end with gfs on ensembles are forecasting an arctic oscillation to go so through the first half of December, we actually had a uh, negative AO. That tells us it had quite a bit of blocking up over the North Pole. The AO then shifted into more positive phase uh, over the past few days. We're currently around neutral with the Arctic Oscillation. But the Jefferson Ensembles are trending the AO in an increasingly negative direction as we go in towards January. That tells us that there is the prospect of uh, blocking return to the Arctic and to the uh, North Pole as we go through the next couple of weeks. The NEO looks like this. Again, black line shows where we've been with the North Atlantic Oscillation. Red lines at the end of the GFS Ensembles are forecasting NEO to go. So the NEO was in a pretty negative phase, actually, for about a month from the middle of November to the middle of December. That included the cold snap, of course, that we had in the third week, I think it was, of November since uh, we have gone into second week of December, we've been in a positive phase of the NEO. We're currently here in a very positive NEO phase. GFS Ensembles over the next couple of weeks forecasting the NEO to slip backwards, though. As we go into the new year, do see hints there that the NEO could also be shifting into a negative phase. So with the AO and the NEO potentially going negative into January, that could be a signal for uh, some colder weather into the new year. We'll have to uh, keep a close eye on that, I think, over the next uh, week or two. So the temperature continues to look very, very mild. We're currently sitting at 7.1. That's 2.6 degrees above 61 to 90 average. It's provisional to yesterday to the 21st of uh, December there. So uh, a very, very mild first 21 days of the month. <coughs> So, sorry everyone, these were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're saying we've got a little bit of a cold snap today, actually. We have a few flakes of snow falling across some parts of the country. That's going to last through to tomorrow, but then the upper air temperature, of course, are lifting up for Christmas. We've been talking about this over the past several weeks. Very well modelled. A really mild spell coming up over the uh, Christmas period. Heading in towards the new year, the upper air temperatures start to come down. Now, we lose the red line, unfortunately. The red line breaks. That's the long-term 30-year average. But you can see to the new year, we're actually slightly below par with the upper air temperatures. And the white line on some means generally stays there then through the first week of uh, January. So we keep uh, the upper air temperature pretty chilly, I think, for the first week of January. Quite a lot of scatter. We have got Barda on some of the members up here 
that we've also got quite a few cold ensemble members down there. Precipitation wise, going to be a lot of dry weather between now to the new year, but through the first week of January, turning much more unsettled with some rather large precipitation spikes. Snow road for Birmingham, looking like that. Quite interesting uh, in the extended. So no snow to come over the next week, of course, with all of the mild weather, high pressure conditions. But we do see a lot of snow spikes there through the first week of uh, January, actually. Telling us that uh, that's an increased risk of some snow through the first week of the month. Going to be an interesting period of model watching coming up, I think, as we approach the new year. Temperature normally in from the 22nd to the 30th of December above average, a mild week to come. And precipitation lines from the 22nd to 30th of December drier than normal. Latest grid from Matt from Earth, Nordschool.net shows we're bringing the wind in from a northwesterly to northerly direction uh, today. Um, no, that's the reason it's colder, and that's the reason we have had a few flakes of snow falling across some parts of the country overnight. And this morning, right, let's start going through the chart data then. Mr. Double H's UK Met Euro run, looking big night on Wednesday, Christmas Day, of course. High pressure south, low pressure north, dragging him that very much southwest wind through Thursday and Friday. The high pressure builds northwards, so um, it's still a mild ridge, but down in the south, we could start getting some clear skies, a little bit of frost and fog potential, maybe by the end of the week and into the weekend. That's a setup uh, on Sunday. High pressure right over top of the country, and that could, as I say, be producing some frost and, uh, frost and fog. A little bit of a gruesome too, some, especially so down in the south. Icon, again, looking really mild for Christmas. After Christmas, high pressure building and taking over, perhaps bringing increased risk of some uh, fog at the end of the week. We had a weather system coming in from the Atlantic next weekend, bringing out breaks of rain. And staying pretty mild with that as well. What's the KMA show? Let's have a look at that one. So, again, high pressure building up from the south as we go beyond uh, Christmas. And then up towards the new year, high pressure keeps sitting close to the country before it's pushed away as we get to New Year itself, turning very unsettled, actually, by New Year's City. Quite a lot of heavy rain coming through. And as that low clears out towards Denmark, then we start to bring the wind around to a colder northerly show. This is the start of the cold spell into the New Year. Well, that's New Year's Day with a little low down in the south. There is some quite cold air to the north of that, so that could be... Believe it or not, which is a little bit of uh, New Year's Day snow there. Do, do, do. Um, that gets out of the way, and we're left with a northern. I think it's only going to be brief, though, because high pressure, the mid-Atlantic ridge, it's really the instigator, uh, starts to slip southward. So I would imagine a couple of days after that, probably going to roll Bardera in over the top of the ridge. So probably only cold out, but it could be uh, a chilly start to 2025 a chilly maybe cold new year with a little bit of snow right let's have a look at gfs midnight run so that one's doing so once more we're bathed in most southwest winds christmas day uh boxing day to 27th 28th high pressure taking over cross country and to the east bring the wind in off the continent could be quite chilly um down in the south with a little bit of frost and fog now we go beyond that and we bring a deep area of low pressure off the Atlantic for New Year's Eve. It's looking quite stormy there for New Year's Eve. Uh, heavy rain and gales or severe gales. New Year's Day, quite cold. Winds in from the uh, northwest, similar to the pattern we've got today, really. Then low pressure starts trying to come up from the southwest, moving into that cold air. Battle lines a little bit drawn there into the New Year there, with milder air low to the south, colder air. Dividor could be some snow potential with that uh, blocking air of high pressure trying to get going to the uh, northeast. But very quickly, by the 4th of January, that's being swept aside as low pressure comes up from the southwest. So then we find ourselves going into a big mild sector and it turns mild, wet, and windy through the first week of January, actually. Um, before maybe hints at trying to get some colder air back in by the 7th. That's as far as we get to the 
GFS today. But GFS sits there in comparison, once again bathing us in those southwest winds. And then high pressure builds over to the east of the country. Second half of next week, perhaps an increase in risk of fog and frost. Um, that's the situation up towards the new year. Low pressure coming in from the Atlantic. Not stormy this time, but probably uh, mild, wet and windy. That pushes through some colder air starts to dig southwards on New Year's Day. Down comes the minus 5 Celsius isotherm. Low pressure forming to the south on the northern side of that low. There might be a little bit of snow potential there into the New Year. Quite interesting charts, these, I have to say. Um, and then high pressure sort of builds out to the west of us um, and sends a ridge. But I have to say this looks rather unlikely <laughs> to me. I reckon all of the energy around here will very quickly flatten this off and return us back to like a, a westerly wind. That looks a very flimsy ridge to me in the Atlantic. But as it is, this GFS run does turn cold in the first week of uh, January. We bring down this cold northerly to northeast wind. Actually, we get my 10 cells ice firm through the country in the very extended range. And looking increasingly blocked, I have to say, by the 7th of January, um, it looks like you're building up a blocking area of high pressure there. Through the Norwegian Sea, going towards Scandinavia, and that sort of backing to the Siberian high, which of course is this area of high pressure just here at a thousand. 55 millibars. So, all very interesting by the end of that uh, GFS sits there. Run. Most parts of Europe looking uh, cold or very cold and an increasingly blocked setup. As I say, I think it looks pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty unlikely, but who knows, you know. But weather is always finding ways to surprise us and catch us out. So, maybe we're going to set up a cold January here. How to wait and see. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much, everyone. For dear Matt, why not drop a comment? Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos, content, live streams, etc., etc., etc. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Well, let's get them to subscribe to. We're on the grind. The grind. We're on the grind to um, 19.3k. So if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely amazing and awesome. Show show everyone. For dear Matt. Right, GM. High pressure apple open store wafting up this southwest wind for Christmas Day, Boxing Day, and the 27th of December sees high pressure building up from the south. Could deliver a little bit of frost and fog down in the south, but fundamentally, this is still a mild pattern. Over the weekend, high pressure remains in control in the south, but turns more unsettled up to the north, and then heading into the new year, that's New Year's Eve, with a rather chilly northwest wind bringing winter showers into the north, then another low pressure punching through for New Year's Day, again, that's been wet and windy weather. We are trying to turn things colder there, we've got cold air digging southwards into uh, northern Europe, we've also got a bit of a blocking feature here in the North Atlantic going up towards Greenland, and we've got low pressure close to the Azores as well, so that's all fine, it's this ridge ongoing <laughs> as ever around Spain, that's the problem, we've got to get rid of that ridge there, send this low pressure in that direction, if we want to do that, then it's this low exits through, we will bring down a cold north or northeasterly wind. So it's close to turning cold into New Year with a jam, but we've got to lower the heights around Spain. And then finally, we've got the East Shem looking like that. High pressure building up from the South Christmas Day. Very mild on Christmas Day. Boxing Day, 27th of December, seeing high pressure in control in the ascendancy. Um, keeping it mild with southwest winds there and heading up towards the New Year. Uh, that's how we look as we get to New Year's Day. So by then, lower pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. Still mild though with a southwest wind, but lower pressure coming in from the Atlantic. And um, no, pretty mild up to New Year's Day. Not a sign of it turning cold uh, with the ECM at day 10, I have to say. Right, this precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tibet.com. Here's the wintry showers that we've got um, around the country through today. They're going to die out tonight. It'll turn mostly dry tonight. Then tomorrow, a warm front brings outbreaks of light rain and drizzle into the west. By uh, Christmas Eve, we're all looking milder. Uh, rain in the northwest, mostly dry. Cloudy, claggy conditions for Christmas Day, probably uh, extending into Boxing Day as well. Although the south might brighten up with some slightly higher pressure. Uh, and then day 10, up to day 10, some wet weather coming into the northwest, but otherwise it's still looking uh, mild there. <coughs>
so sorry once more, everyone. Right, BW Ops on the table. Then we can see ensembles today for day 10. Gets us to New Year's Day. For the Icelandic Met Office, 1st of January 2025. 20 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure over and to West Country. High pressure out towards Greenland and Canada. Winds coming in from a mile uh, southwesterly direction. With that, we've got 16. Clearing the low pressure to Scandinavia. Building up the ridge around Greenland and Canada. That's to turn colder into New Year's. Year's day and then we've got uh, 15 here with high pressure to our south and east low pressure to our north and west and that's bringing up that mild southwest wind so synoptically the operational run um with that mild new year probably not all that well supported and then in two weeks time these are the options that we've got it'll get us to the 6th of january 16 members of the ecm Ensembles with low pressure over to the east of the country. High pressure blocking around green ice. That's turning cold and wintry through the first week of January there. We've got 14 with high pressure just to our west. That's going to bring down quite a cold northwest sea to northerly. We are a little bit on the periphery, though, uh, with that. We've got 11 with low pressure around Scandinavia. High pressure around green Iceland, but not properly lowering the heights to ourselves. So the cold is there about being uh, pushed into towards um, Denmark and whatnot. What not? <laughs> and then we've got 10. Uh, similar to the GFS 6 then, I think, these high pressure sort of building up towards Scandinavia and potentially bringing quite a cold northeasterly wind. The chance of the coldest spell for the first week of January um, 2025 having some cold weather in, in the opening period is growing here, I think. There is a growing risk, growing chance, but we might get a cold spell into January there. Right, CFSB2. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. CFSB2. And then we're done. These are 500 millibar height anomalies. So I broke it down into weekly pairs. The first week pair takes over 27th, 28th of December. Next week looking dry and mild. High pressure building up from southwest, low pressure towards green and ice. And we're bringing in that southwesterly wind as well. Week two is the uh, 29th of December to the 4th of January. High pressure then over to the south beach. So the country that keeps us within the mild air. Week 3 <laughs> is going to be the 5th to the 11th of January. No cold snap. Uh, high pressure just centred over to the southwest of the country. No pressure up here. Keeps the wind in from that mild west direction. And week 4 is going to be the 12th to the 18th. 18th of January, with high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, winds in from that western direction. But CFS is not shifting. The CFS is not shifting. It's keeping its idea of uh, prolonged mild weather going into the new year and well, actually, well, actually, well into uh, January. We shall see. Will the CFS, the Grinch, can't forecast snow? Will it shift its ideas? We'll see. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please you like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Webbers and Get Men to subscribe to help get us to 19.3k. And why not drop a comment after you've watched this video? It's nearly up yet now. Uh, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, doing that for Gals and Webber Thank you so much, everyone. Right, that's it for today, 10 14, Dan Ben. But we're back at 6 pm. We're going to have a chat and we're going to hang out for a while. We will have a look at 12 Dan. And of course, we'll do Ensembles Watch within the live stream as well. Now, it's going to be an epic stream. I shall see you at 6 pm. We'll be looking to see how many Jeff S. Ensemble members turning things colder into the new year. I think that'll be the focus for Ensembles Watch. So, it's going to be an interesting live. I'll see you a little bit later at 6 pm. Um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your Sunday afternoon. And for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.